Welcome to our final week in our quality quarantine series. I'm Hillary Ferrer with Mama Bear Apologetics, and with me is Elizabeth Urbanowitz from Foundation Worldview. And Lindsay Redenwalt from Mama Bear Apologetics. So Amy is having to play host to some people today, and Elizabeth was saying we've basically had all combinations of people except for you. You've been the, <laughs> the one that's been with us since the Faithful. beginning. <laughs> So uh, for our final week in quality quarantine, it is Movie Monday, and so we are going to pick one that we think is just a classic that everybody needs to see, and since, uh, I can't remember if we announced this at the beginning, yes, uh, basically, yes, I got mine too, my whole Narnia series, except for the book that's out, because I basically am always reading it. Um, <laughs> The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. So I can't remember if we mentioned this before, but Disney Plus, I think if you have Verizon, is giving people like a year of free streaming, which normally since John and I don't have kids, we wouldn't get Disney Plus, but we're like, eh. it kind of came at the right time with the whole quarantine here. But so you have both of the Narnia, uh, I don't think, I'm not sure if Voyage of the Dawn Treaders on there, but I know at least uh, Prince Caspian and Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe are streaming on there. And so today we are going to talk about some of the things that we noticed mm -hmm. from The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe, which is done by um, Disney and who, who was, was it? D Disney DreamWorks? I can't remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can't remember. But we're going to talk about some of the things that we noticed in there. Um, and so I'm going to start us out just with this idea that as I was watching, I was kind of taking notes, even though I've seen this a thousand different times, I was watching it from the perspective of, you know, if I had kids, what would I be discussing with them? And the first thing that I noticed, and this kind of goes back to what we're going to be talking about on Theology Thursday um, a little bit too, but is this difference between niceness and kindness versus mm. goodness. That mm -hmm. a lot of times people confuse the idea of if someone's nice or kind, that they're good. Mm. Um, and this is, these are the notes that I, that I wrote. Um, niceness and kindness versus goodness are not the same thing. Uh, notice how the witch immediately comforted, provided for, served, prioritized, and encouraged Edmund. Mm -hmm. Think about all the qualities of someone we want to be around. It starts out when, when he meets the white witch at the very beginning, that the dwarf comes and like puts a knife to his throat. That's how we expect evil to come at us. But this idea that evil is going to come at us through comfort and provision and service mm -hmm. and prioritization and encouragement that's mm -hmm. not the thing that we're expecting. And so, but that is the kind of thing that we need to point out to our kids this is sometimes how evil comes. It's the difference, again, she was being very nice and very kind to him, but mm -hmm. she was not good. And uh, Elizabeth, you had a comment about Mr. Tumnus. Yes, because we see the same thing with Mr. Tumnus in the movie that, you know, he starts out and he's very kind and very comforting and very friendly to Lucy. But we find out that he actually is using that as a pretense to turn her over to the white witch. Now his end result is different, you know, than mm -hmm. with a white witch's end result with Edmund, that he has this moment of conscious of saying, I can't do this. But again, we see another example of, you know, just somebody being nice and kind does not mean that they are being good, that we have to be really discerning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the witch kind of throws Edmund under the bus, like in the middle of the movie, right? <laughs> like does. they're in the prison and Tumnus is also imprisoned and um, she has him brought out and says, look at him, this, you know, pointing to Edmund and says, um, he turned you in for some sweeties, you know, mm -hmm. which I've heard that Turkish delight is not actually that great. I've I never have had it. And I was like, oh my yeah, gosh, why is he good. so obsessed with this? Like, I remember the first time I was able to taste it. I was like, I'm finally going to taste like this amazing thing that Edmund was willing to like turn everybody in for. I'm like, this is kind of gross. <laughs> Yeah, maybe C.S. Lewis was just maybe throwing that in as a joke. I don't know. Like, uh, maybe, ever, I don't know. But um, I've never had it. Maybe that's what I'm going to do with the girls this week is make some Turkish delight. I think if um, we were to do this in the real world, it would he, he would be turning them over for some Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> I honestly, I, I can't do sugar anymore, but I remember in college, I just would eat those by the bucket full while I studied oh, yep. back in the day. God yep. rest my, um, my metabolism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not so much anymore. Uh, but the the idea of um, siblings was what stood out to me. One of yeah. the, well, one of the many things that stood out <laughs> to me. I am an only child, and so I did not really grow up with the idea of sibling rivalry. I never really understood it. Um, I didn't understand why one sibling would be jealous of another. It never really made sense to me. 
No. Oh, only I children. <laughs> what yeah. is this that they're it's talking nice. about? Fighting. I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, here I am reading a book. Um, and I'm perfectly <laughs> fine by myself. Um, yeah. So my girls, I have three of them and they're all unique, just like the kids in Narnia, right? So at the end, when they're crowned, um, they're each given titles and I'm going to mess it up, but I, okay. So Peter, the magnificent, Edmund, the just mm -hmm. Susan, the gentle and Lucy, the valiant, right? Yay, valiant. You got it. Good job. Yeah. So they all have great qualities about them that Aslan recognizes in them and, and publicly recognizes, mm -hmm. but we see the struggle in this movie in particular with Edmund and Peter. Mm -hmm. um, Peter constantly wanted to boss around Edmund and tell him like what to do and how to do it. It's not just enough that it gets done, but it has to be done Peter's way. And isn't that how older siblings treat their younger siblings? I see it all the time in my girls. Like, it's not okay that you're doing it the way you want to do it. I want it done how I want it done, you know? Forget siblings. I, I see this happen in marriage. <laughs> There's a certain way you're supposed to load the dishwasher. That's true. And there's a right way to fold towels, but we don't need to get into <laughs> the other, You know, the other sibling relationship that is kind of highlighted in this, in the book series, not necessarily in this movie, mm -hmm. um, is the relationship between Susan and Lucy. Um, there is, between the boys, it's a power struggle. And with the girls, it's sort of a beauty struggle. Mm -hmm. Lucy is um jealous of the way that Susan looks and um her beauty and how it draws attention mm -hmm. and Susan is aware of how her beauty draws attention and so she yeah. plays that up and and that's kind of cruel but Lucy is is you know the younger sister looking up to her older sister so that rivalry those rivalries really stood out with you know when we read this book series with my girls mm -hmm. um and you know how do we help our kids recognize the strengths that God has given them Ooh, that's good. Um, and use it to grow in relationship rather than as a weapon in relationship. Mm -hmm. And how do we recognize it in each other so we can appreciate the strength that they mm -hmm. have that maybe we don't have? Because mm -hmm. one of the things that I've noticed that, uh, is like a human tendency that people think that the thing that they're good at isn't because they're good at it. They think it's because that's the easy thing to do. And so everybody mm. else is an idiot because they can't do this really, really simple thing. Mm. And we don't realize that it's easy for us because we're good at it. And something else that's not easy for us, somebody else is good at. So being able to recognize mm -hmm. and appreciate that in our siblings and knowing that the stuff that comes easy for us is not going to come easy for them and stop judging because they've got other gifts and skills that we don't have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that's something that we as adults, you know, with our children can help point out, mm -hmm. you know, can encourage our kids to recognize in each other, you know, like, what did you see him do, you know, like today, or did you notice how she did mm. this so well so that it becomes more of a habit for them? Because as humans, we tend to just get annoyed, you know, and not recognize all of the really great things. <laughs> yeah in someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and it's, it was funny that you bring up like the sibling relationship, uh, Lindsay, because the situation that we find the Pevensey children in, in the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is somewhat similar to what the situation we're in today. Like we're not fighting like a physical war against other human beings, but the Pevenseys, you know, because of World War II, were shipped off to the country and they were basically in quarantine in yeah. the professor's house, you know, in the country. And that's how they ended mm -hmm. up finding Narnia because it was raining and they were stuck in the house all day. So that, that can even be a really great point. And of going connection. through the dictionary is a game. <laughs> gastro... Children after my own heart. <laughs> Define gastrovascular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can get some good ideas, ideas from that. And also I love Lindsay, how you talked about the qualities that Aslan pointed out because that ending scene always makes me cry. Like yeah. when Aslan is crowning them, because here on earth, like, you know, like we're just constantly having to fight to remember what our mm. true identity is. Mm. And so I think that's another thing like to point out to our kids, you know, that even, you know, like Edmund being crowned, it was because Aslan, you know, like paid the price that, that Edmund should have paid. And, and Edmund now has this new identity as a king. And so I think that's another great thing we can point out with our kids. You know, what is our true identity if we've turned from our sins and trusted in Jesus? And I think also it kind of shows how the things that we struggled with can sometimes be because that's the identity that God's trying to bring us into. The, the, mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting that Edmund's name was Edmund, um, uh, Edmund the Just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That yeah. he was the one through whom Aslan 
demonstrated justice. Right. And because it was on his behalf that it's like, he actually took that characteristic onto himself and it came from a wound and it came from a failing. Mm. It didn't come from a strength, but that wound and that failing became his strength. It, it became so much of a strength. It became his identity. He was Edmund the just. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's also a good way to point out yeah. how even our worst failures, the Lord takes them and he, I just, I can't remember where this is, but it talks, it's probably in Revelation where it talks about that uh, the Lord is going to give us a name that only he himself knows mm. uh, that we are going to have a new name bestowed upon us. We have no idea what that's going to be. And it's very possible that, that that new name that we have to bestowed upon us is something that we hated ourselves for in this world. Mm. So mm. Um, that is our uh, Monday uh, movie Monday. Mm. And so I hope y'all have a chance to go watch the Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe. Oh, and exciting, exciting fact. I really hope they don't screw it up. <laughs> Um, Netflix has purchased the rights to all seven books. Nobody has ever purchased the rights to all seven books before, mm -hmm. I think. And so they're going to be actually doing a series and we're not sure exactly what that's going to look like, but they're going to be doing a series of the whole thing. And basically I wet myself when I heard, <laughs> I was so excited. Okay. Maybe I didn't actually do that just facetiously. Um, I was so excited to be able to see those because as we're going to talk about on worldview Wednesday, we're going to talk about which books are our favorite. A lot of them are ones that have not been put into a movie. Um, so we will see you tomorrow for Training Tuesday in our final week of quality quarantine. So see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.